so James Gunn got fired from Disney. I just gotta ask all those Gunn fans, you mad, bro? So recently, James Gunn, director of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, got fired from Disney because of some controversial tweets. Jokes about pedophilia. What? I'm not here to judge anyone, but who does that? That is freaking weird to me, dude. But putting my biases aside, let's give James Gunn the benefit of the doubt. I mean, he must be a family-friendly director because Disney hired him, right? Uh, no. First off, can you name a James Gunn movie other than Guardians of the Galaxy? You probably can't because Movie 43, Slither, and even Super were all raunchy and ridiculous and just not that good. What in the world was Disney thinking? I might get some heat there from the horror fans, but let's be honest. I mean, James Gunn, when it comes to a body of work, not the brightest resume in the world. But what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy cannot go without being recognized because what he did was amazing. He took no-name superheroes and put them together with no-name music and made a masterpiece. Okay, masterpiece is giving a lot more credit, but seriously, they are some of the funnest movies and freshest movies that we've had in a long time, especially in a genre that is dominating the silver screen nowadays. But James, bro, Seriously? Pedophilia jokes? Pedophilia themed parties? Disgusting, man. So look at it from Disney's perspective. This is a household family name brand. They need to keep that name clean of any inconsistency whatsoever. Is their track record the cleanest? No, not at all. But this is something they can do today. And if I were Disney, I'd be doing the same thing. But Dave Bautista's gonna leave if James Gunn is fired. What are we gonna do without Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 or Infinity Wars 2? First off, chill. You don't think Disney has thought about this? Of course they have. Dave Bautista is great. He's brought a lot to not only the Guardians family, but the MCU in general. But I mean, Disney's Disney they're gonna be fine. If you remember right, spoiler, Drax got snapped out of existence. You don't think Disney can come up with some sort of lame excuse for why Drax isn't in this anymore? He's lost forever in the Soul Stone. But, I mean, you do have to consider the fact that they can't just only kill Drax. There's gotta be some other casualties. So maybe we might see other things hit the fan. I didn't think of that. That might be a problem. But Disney has a little bit of class. They're doing a peace offering at maybe keeping James Gunn's script. I know that Dave Bautista would like that because he'd even said that if you fire James Gunn, I'll walk. Now that James Gunn is fired, he's starting to say, if you throw out his script, I'll walk. Let's see what he says after they throw that out. But I trust Disney. Why? Because Disney has been a part of my childhood for a long time. Whether that's brainwashed or not, it's been a brand that I go to every time because I have faith in it. That's because I know that they don't dabble in shady things like Gunn has. Am I upset? Sure, Gunn did a great job and I'd hate for it to go south. But look at what Disney has been doing lately. They've been reaching out to lesser known directors to take on big titles in the MCU. If there's anything that's been doing extremely well, that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And for Disney to reach out to Gunn himself as a very no-name director to take on something that was a huge risk was, again, risky. So who's to say that Disney can't take any more risks and it work out really well for them? I'm pretty sure that they have a lot of other no-name directors that they can turn to to take on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Look at Taika Waititi. He did an amazing job at Thor Ragnarok. Not to mention, it was a fresh and new take on that character. It was hilarious, it was fresh, and it was very, very epic. Not to mention, they're even considering extending the Thor name. Who's to say that he couldn't do a great job at Guardians of the Galaxy? 
he's got humor to back it up, and not to mention there's a lot of improv that goes with all of his jokes. What We Do in the Shadows is probably one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long, long time. And let's also mention the fact that he changed up the music a lot in Thor Ragnarok. He knows what he's doing when it comes to music. I think that Taika would do a great job when it comes to Guardians 3. But let's consider that they do take his script. I mean, Thor Ragnarok's script was, if there was one, just put to the side and depended upon all improv, which was great. But if Disney decides to use Gunn's script, would that be a perfect match for Taika Waititi to have his style in Guardians 3. Not to mention, is it too much heat for Taika to take because we know there's gonna be a lot of heat for a new director coming in. Not to mention any potential heat that Taika might find in his current project, where a boy has an imaginary friend who is known as Hitler. So let's consider someone else. Someone very recent, someone that we haven't heard from and has a lot of potential to go big places. Boots Riley, the director of Sorry to Bother You, could do a pretty amazing job. That's a, that's a movie that has to stay extremely strict to a script, but it is very acquired taste. But I think he would do a great job putting his own spin on something that we're already very familiar with. Not to mention he's got a hilarious sense of humor that I think would work really well for the Guardians. But maybe that's not Riley's style. Let's look at somebody else who has brought us something we all love that has worked with existing material before and gave it a unique spin. Chris McKay, the director of Lego Batman. Yeah, Lego Batman. Could you imagine what he could do with the Guardians of the Galaxy 3? I mean, he's already been in the mix, not to mention he's given us a great movie in the past, one that we all love, not to mention one that didn't hurt the Batman brand. It only expanded it more and made us love it so much more. So the walking grounds are very familiar for him. Then again, look at his body of work. It's all animation and maybe that's too much of a risk to take on a live action household name. So we're looking at a comedic director who can take existing genres and give it a new and fresh look all while incorporating great music to it. I have an idea. Did any of you see Baby Driver? Edgar Wright is probably one of my favorite directors of all time. He's given us genres that we're very familiar with but taken them in a whole different light like the zombie genre with Shaun of the Dead or hot fuzz when it comes to B-action movies. Everything that he has done in the past has been very much heavily based upon a script, but enough room to have improv make it come to life. Not to mention what he did with music in the movie Baby Driver may potentially make us fall in love with the Guardians and their love for music all over again. But what do I know? Maybe Wright and Marvel are not even on speaking terms because of what happened on the first Ant-Man movie. All I'm trying to say is, Guardian fans, we're gonna be fine. Disney, whether you hate them or not, they're still in charge of your favorite franchise. So let's think about why Guardians of the Galaxy was such a success. It was because it was different and it was fresh and new, unique. So wouldn't that work if Disney reached into their bag of fresh, unique, and lesser named directors to take a new take on Guardians of the Galaxy? Whether they pay out or not, we see that Gunn did pay out, but not for a long haul. And let's not even talk about the Ryan Johnson fiasco. That'll be later. But before I go, I wanna leave you with this thought. If James Gunn made all of these jokes a long time ago, wouldn't have Disney seen that before they hired him? Gotta be honest, Disney. You screwed the pooch there.